What's up? I'm your local pleb, and one year ago, exactly on Halloween night of 2022, I released one of the most popular videos on this channel. That video being Top 10 Best Pokemon Creepypastas, in which, well, the title of the video describes it all. I just talk about a bunch of my favorite Pokemon Creepypastas. Like, what more is there to be said? However, I thought it would be fitting that exactly one year later, we would come back to the land of Pokemon, but we take a gander at a few things that are a bit more canon per se. If you're a fan of Pokemon, especially if you're a completionist like myself, then you very well may be familiar with the Pokedex. This trusty tool is capable of recording a Pokemon's size, height, weight, location, and even variant depending on if it's a male or female or even a shiny. However, the most unique thing about the Pokedex is that it's capable of recording a simple description of the Pokemon itself as if it were a basic summary. This is unique in regards to learning how a Pokemon lives, how they fight, how they treat others, or even their backstories of sort. Now with that being said, some of these Pokedex entries are very adorable and can be cute. However, that doesn't mean that there's nothing that's scary out there within the Pokemon world. I mean, we have things that look like this, this, and even this. Sheesh. Obviously, there are many aspects in Pokemon that makes the games just a bit more chilling than usual, and Pokedex entries are no stranger to this as well. So, I thought for Halloween of 2023, I thought it'd be a great time to talk about my personal top 10 scariest Pokemon Pokedex entries. There aren't many rules for this list, but I do need to state one important thing. Throughout many Pokemon games, there's a chance that their Pokedex entries change depending on what game they're in. For example, if a Pokemon was released in Red and Blue, that doesn't mean it'll have the same description as in X and Y. Hell, despite being released in the same generation, their Pokedex entries might be different depending on the game. Game. So at the very least, I'll have to say specifically what game the Pokedex entry comes from as I mentioned the Pokemon. So with that being said, I hope you have candy and caramel apples in hand because that white hand on your shoulder isn't going to feed itself. Malamar may not be the most iconic Pokemon in regards to having a creepy Pokedex entry in regards to everyone else, I mean, most of their entries are based around their core skill of hypnosis. However, this one's entry stood out like a sore thumb in comparison to the rest. It's said that Malamar's hypnotic powers played a role in certain history-changing events. This one is eerie because you have to think about what certain events that Malamar ended up changing in regards to Pokemon history. How much power does Malamar truly have? Does it have anything to do with any sort of Pokemon war? Just to clarify, these events are history changing, meaning that they changed the future of the Pokemon world for good, and unless if you're a legendary or anything like that, I couldn't see another Pokemon doing that. All of this just makes Malamar much more ominous of a Pokemon. If they're already devious enough to make some Pokemon or human do their bidding, then what other powers do they have? Houndoom is actually one of my favorite Generation 2 Pokemon because of its incredible design. It just looks so devious and dastardly. However, the only thing that's even more devilish than that is its Pokedex entry. There's one from Pokemon Gold and another one that I want to read off that appears in a few different games like Pokemon Platinum. If you are burned by the flames it shoots from its mouth, the pain will never go away. The flames it breathes when angry contains toxins. If they cause a burn, it will hurt forever. So you know that pain you feel when you stub your toe or when you slam your funny bone against the hard surface? Yeah, well imagine if that never went away. And we're talking about if you were lit on fire! I can't possibly imagine the constant agony someone would be in if someone was lit on fire, and all of their flesh was melted off, and the pain will never go away if you end up getting flame blasted by a Houndoom. No matter how many ice packs or ice baths you will use, it will legitimately be impossible for you to feel any relief. You could live your whole entire life, and the pain will never go away. That's the kind of suffering I wouldn't even want to wish upon anyone. I'm just gonna make sure that I never enter a heated environment ever again. I mean, nothing can be bad if it comes from a cold place, right? On the surface, Phantom is actually really cute. However, remember that we're dealing with a ghost type here. If it has anything to do with it being spooky, it's most likely a ghost type Pokemon. And of course, Phantom is no different from this as we can read here. These Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died in the forest. Their cries sound like eerie screams. So we're talking about dead kids now? Not only are we talking about literal dead children, but we are also talking about their spirits possessing tree stumps whilst endlessly crying and screaming as if trying to find a way out. How is this not terrifying? Oh, and of course, it gets worse as we take a look at the other Pokedex entry. By imitating the voice of a child, it causes people to get hopelessly lost deep in the forest. It's trying to make friends with them. 
Basically, it's an infinite cycle. The Phantoms are trying to lure others, which could most likely be children, into the forest to try and make friends with them, but those kids will most likely end up getting lost, die of starvation, hydration, or getting exhausted, and the only thing their souls will possess are nearby tree stumps as well. Moral of the story, make sure you never let your kids out of sight. Even if you go exploring into a forest by yourself, you better have at least a phone to call for help if you ever get lost. I'm sorry, but I'm not looking to be turned into a tree today. Since I finished the circus video recently, let's go back to talking about balloons which are colorful and fun. However, are balloons like Drifloon really as innocent as they look? Well, let's take a gander at their Pokedex entry and see. Stories go that it grabs the hands of small children and drags them away to the afterlife. It dislikes heavy children. Okay, so now I don't like balloons. They just take children and float them off somewhere so that they can die. It could be a lack of oxygen from dragging them so high up, dropping them to the ground at a high height, or even having their string tangle around the children's neck. I know I kind of seem dramatic when I say that, but you can't deny the fact that the entry literally says drags them away to the afterlife. I don't know how else to say that. I will admit though, I do find it funny that Drifloon canonically hates fat children because they're so big because they can't lift them off into the afterlife. So take this advice from me. If you get bullied because of your weight, be lucky that the Drifloon isn't carrying you up thousands of feet in the air until you see the heavens, followed by a hard concrete ground after you get dropped by a few seconds. When thinking about a Pokemon who gives you nightmares, the first Pokemon that you'd usually likely think of would be obviously Darkrai. However, what if there was a Pokemon more innocent who had the capabilities of giving you nightmares as well, but their overall appearance and attitude was the complete opposite of the Pokemon of Bad Dreams? I'm not joking, Masharna's Pokedex entry is more terrifying than you think. When dark mists emanate from its body, don't get too near. If you do, your nightmares will become reality. Imagine if you just see a Masharna with dark mists around it, and you happen to get near, and all of a sudden, a mountain of spiders comes creeping up onto you, or some mutated monster suddenly just appears and tries to devour you. All because you happen to go near a sleeping Pokemon. That's all it takes to go from living to dead. And just to make this clear, the entry states that your nightmares will become reality. Meaning that you don't just pass out and have a nightmare, you have a real nightmare alive. I'm just hoping that there's some way that the nightmare can end before it goes on for too long. If your nightmare is an asteroid heading towards Earth, then just being near this Pokemon could lead to the literal end of the world. Hope you sleep well tonight, by the way. So after Houndoom, you'd expect the chilly environments of the snow to be a bit more tolerable, right? Well, meet Frostlass. Looks pretty cute, right? Well, her intentions of what she'll do to you are anything but. When it finds humans or Pokemon it likes, it freezes them and takes them to its chilly den, where they become decorations. She will freeze you to death, take you away, and leave your body frozen on the wall for decoration purposes. I mean, it's an honor to be called a decoration, but this is on a whole new level. However, let's say being a decoration is too extreme. Is that really the worst Frostlass can do to you? Well, believe it or not, in Pokemon Moon, it's actually worse. The soul of a woman lost on a snowy mountain possessed an icicle, becoming this Pokemon. The food it most relishes is the souls of men. If you aren't lucky enough to become a part of Frostlass's new decoration collection, she'll go ahead and eat your soul instead. You'd be surprised how much you'd prefer death over death if the process is different between the two. So good luck out there if you're trying to survive the harsh winter environment. At least if Frostlass ends up finding you already frozen to death, your body most likely won't go to waste. Look at this little adorable slug of slime. It's probably going to be the cutest thing on this list, not to mention that it evolves into Gudra, which is one of my favorite Generation 6 Pokemon. But of course, Pokemon had to really mess up with the cute nature of this Pokemon by making their entry more terrifying than they look. It has trouble drawing a line between friends and food. It will calmly try and melt and eat those it gets along well with. So it doesn't matter if you're a marshmallow or you're the person who's been caring for Sligoo for the past five years. They will not hesitate to eat anything that can give them nutrients. How a Pokemon isn't capable of telling the two apart? I literally have no clue at all, but maybe it's some slug related thing that I can't relate to. So my professional advice for taking care of Sligoo is not only make sure that you feed it extra during breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, and snack time, but also evolve it into Gudra as fast as possible. It's said that Gudra may be strong enough that her tail can whip a dump truck back by a ton, but at least you won't be melted alive with love. You'll just be covered in a lot of goo. Eh, I'm into it. 
We all know that Mimikyu most likely has the creepiest design in all of Pokemon. I mean, its design is meant to be a copy of Pikachu. It's not a Pikachu clone like Emolga or Pachirisu or Togedomaru, it's just a fake copy that wants as much recognition as Pikachu so it can feel loved. Now, if you're familiar with Mimikyu, you'll remember that the one thing you should never do is look under Mimikyu's cloak, or else the fate you'll end up having will be truly terrible. However, did you know that Mimikyu themselves will be the one to end your life and you won't die out of fear? I'm not joking. There will be no forgiveness for any who revealed that it was pretending to be Pikachu. It will bring the culprit down, even at the cost of its own life. You don't even need to see Mimikyu's true face to get killed by this Pokemon with full intention. If you just try and expose Mimikyu for what they're trying to do, they'll kill you themselves, even if it means if they die in the process. It's already terrifying enough that something so horrifying could be concealed underneath that sheet, but the fact that Mimikyu has the full intent to kill you makes me really question if Mimikyu really is as cute as we can assume. Ah, the fun of the beach. This fun includes sun tanning, swimming, and building sandcastles in the sand. Well, Palosand is the last sandcastle that you would want to be near. They're more than just dangerous. They're a threat to anyone who's near any sort of sand. Why? Well, it says here... Buried beneath the castle are masses of dried up bones from those whose vitality it has drained. This Pokemon will drag your body down into the deepest parts of the sand and then devour you until you're nothing but bones. Hell, the bones of their past victims continue to stay just below Palo Sand. I don't know if they enjoy it, but imagine if a kid ended up digging through Palo Sand and ended up finding actual human remains. What do you do then? Oh, but it just gets worse when you realize this as well. Each of its grains of sand has its own will. Palo Sand eats small Pokemon and siphons away their vital essence while they're still alive. Not only does Palo Sand eat small Pokemon as well as humans and trainers alive, but every grain of sand on a Palo Sand is sentient. Each one has its own will, meaning Palo Sand trying to suffocate you is like a coordinated team attack to make sure their victims never escape again. Do you know how much sand you would be holding if you just had a handful? That would be thousands upon thousands of grains. And this is a whole sand castle we're talking about! Why does everything that looks so cute end up being so terrifying? I'm not even joking at all when I say this. This Pokedex entry for Gengar from specifically Pokemon Sun has always been cemented into my head because of how it was when I discovered it. Genuinely, it felt like a sick joke, but this is actually how it's written. Should you feel yourself attacked by a sudden chill, it is evidence of an approaching Gengar. There is no escaping it. Give up. The, the, the Pokedex tells you to die. It no joke tells you that if you encounter a Gengar by being attacked by a sudden chill, you should just give up. Imagine a Pokedex entry telling you to give up all hope and it doesn't even tell you any useful trips or any way to deteriorate it from going after you. How would anyone want to walk outside, let alone in the middle of the night, after hearing an entry like that? The reason why it still shocks me to this day is just because of the fact that even the Pokedex entry itself just seems to give up on trying to find a way to escape a ghost Pokemon. It almost feels like Gengar actually possessed the Pokedex entry and changed it to make it seem like there's no way to escape. You know the worst part about all of this though? I'm pretty sure that these Pokedex entries were written by actual people or professors within the Pokemon universe. Someone actually went through this, as if they wrote this as a last warning to anyone who happens to encounter a Gengar, and let's be honest, I don't think ended well for them. It really shows you the risks of researching Pokemon. The sense of an adventure is incredible, but one certain Pokemon being researched could be your last. Despite these entries making all of these Pokemon so terrifying, I must admit that the terrifying Pokedex entries make the world of Pokemon so much more unique in regards to lore and potential ideas for what the future of Pokemon hold. Trust me, I'm terrified of all of these Pokemon now, but their stories also give me the temptations to use them so much more within the game. If you're ever playing another Pokemon game and you go onto a giant catching spree and try and complete your Pokedex entries, then do me a favor and take some time to read some of those entries yourself. You might find some new lore about Pokemon that are either new or old Pokemon that might have more of their lore expanded on in the future. You can experience uncurable burning pains, be frozen and kept as decor, or have your friendly slime pet eat you alive unintentionally, but these Pokedex entries will always be creepy in my heart, and there's probably tons of other ones I haven't even mentioned in this video as well. Maybe sometime in the future I'll do that as a sequel to this video. Would you all like that? It'd be cool to talk about some more Pokemon. I mean, considering that we're all different at the end of the day, all of us could have our own Pokedex entries. If I had one, I wonder what it would be about. Web, yellow web, species, web, 
part not available and not available description of where to use to live peacefully amongst many others of his kind. However, after having been exiled at their home, they resided the forest where...